Hey guys, Jason Sayers back here once again with another drum reaction video. Today we are going to do yet one more drumio one. And by that, I mean we're checking out a very, very, very famous drummer, checking out a song in a genre that they've never played before for the first ever time. Now, we have seen some really good ones and we've seen some pretty bad ones. I shall not name them, but you know who they are. Today, though, we are checking out the young wizard himself, Grayson Nekrutman. This guy, for such a young drummer, is amazing. He is phenomenal. But he is about to attempt to play Sleep Tokens Hypnosis. Now, this track is hard. There is a lot going on. There's multiple time signatures. The drum feels, they're, they're quite linear. So I know what I want to expect when I'm hearing it. But just bear in mind, he has listened to this for the first ever time. So I am very intrigued to see and hear what he's going to do over this. So uh, let's dive right in, shall we? This is going to be so interesting. Okay, going for double the speed. Like in the void. converted it into like a drum and bass sort of vibe. That rifle was actually the same position. I think. I was a bit early. This bit in half 
kantamat. trying to overcomplicate this section. There we go. Oh. Nice job, dude. You're an animal. So you want to know who it is? Yeah. Okay, so the band is called Sleep Token. Okay. You ever heard of them? Yes. And the drummer's name, they're, they're totally anonymous, so his name is Tu. Tu? Yeah. The band's completely anonymous? Yeah. Actually? Yeah. What? How was that? Was that even re remotely close? That was awesome, dude. Okay, so we're going to load you up the original. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> If you want to watch the full video, I highly recommend you to, so, so you can get through into Grayson's thought process as to what he was doing versus what he did, uh, and then following on to him listening to the original so he can dissect his own playing. Um, I, I'm really, really torn on this one because I love Grayson as a drummer, but there were sections there that I felt he was trying to overcomplicate. I feel like he got the style of music was metal, so tried to incorporate a lot of double kick. But actually, with Sleep Token, it's very restricted, pulled back. It is gent to a certain degree um, with a lot of other elements. Um, felt like I was listening to a, a drum and bass song through some of that, just because of the really fast uh, patterns, because I'm not used to it being that quick i'm used to the very pull back from everything number two does um on on the original track and it's always hard because you because you know the original so well by listening to it when you hear another drummer's perspective of hearing it without drums by the way um it's very interesting to see how their thought process uh depending on the genre they're playing can make something sound completely different it just it does go to show that the drummer makes the band a lot of the time without people realizing everyone will be like oh no it's the singer because that's what i can hear but actually the drums control the song not just in time but in the feeling that they they give and having the right drummer in the right situation is key in a lot of situations um basically what i'm trying to get at here is that grayson's come from playing well everything that i've ever heard him play i know he's done a lot more in like heavier bands nowadays um but i'm used to seeing him play like whiplash covers uh and different sort of jazz big band sort of covers and stuff like that i'm i've not seen him so this is completely from my perspective out of his depth not as a drummer not as a drummer but trying to pinpoint everything but fair play to him he did remember key points within the song so the structure was there um obviously there's one section where the verse gets slightly extended um into i don't want to call it a middle eight because it's not really the middle eight but it does get extended into like an extra pre-chorus maybe that's more the right term i should use um and i felt like he went for the chorus there but the actual actual structure wise he remembered it very well uh he was counting it extremely well but it was the footwork i felt he was trying to really 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 overcomplicate things where it didn't need to be me as a drummer that's grown up with rock and metal my entire life i would have held back and i would have played a lot of those sections 
a lot slower, a lot more open. Yes, when number two plays it, there are a lot more feels going on. Uh, there's a lot more intricate symbol work. There's loads. There's just a lot going on on the original track. And yeah, it's very nice to always hear another drummer's perspective on it. And, you know, you can't, you can't judge a drummer based off of these drumio performances because, you know, we had Dennis Chambers, one of the greatest sort of funk drummers there is. And, you know, I think it was a tall track he tried playing. And, you know, he had the structure right, but everyone was, I felt bad mouthing him, but you shouldn't because they're coming from a genre they've known for years to something that they've never heard of and you know they're just kind of expected to go in blind listen to a track for the first time and just go for it you can not judge them on that fact at all whereas with grayson you know you can tell he's definitely got the technicality you know he's a phenomenal drummer but i just felt like you know if you're hearing a song for the first time like from my perspective, like if you, if you put me into a jazz or big band situation, I'm screwed because I can't play a lot of those intricate ride patterns that he's going to be very good at. So when I'm playing, if you put me in a, you know, Jason listens to a, a big band song and tries to play, I'll probably fail. I'll probably get a lot of the structure down, but then again, I won't try and incorporate things that i feel are going to be like really uh, what i would consider to be overplaying um whereas grayson on this one for me personally a lot of the footwork he was doing was overplaying i would have kept it a lot more simple i would have drawn it back a little bit yeah fair enough even if you playing the the double time sort of what i would consider like a drum and bass groove well not it's not really drum and bass i know but a faster groove over a slower track just because that's the vibe it gave you at that particular point, fine. But I don't think all those double kicks were 100% necessary uh, for me. But hey, what did you think? How did you think Grayson did with this with this track? As I say, Phenomenal Drummer, please go and check out his channel. He, he is absolutely amazing at what he does. But what do you think about this performance? You know, I've seen comments on the drumio one i've seen people go yeah fair play that was a hard track to do and it is a very 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 hard track to do but i want to know your thoughts on my thoughts basically what do you think of my comments do you agree do you disagree do you think that i'm reading too much into it do you think that i'm you know a complete idiot that should just shut up according to a lot of you on my buddy rich videos i should just shut up for a lot of it but anyway I'm going to end the video there. Thank you so much for checking out another one of my videos. If you want to check out any more, they will be appearing on screen now. Thanks a lot, guys. I will catch you on the next one.